Hi, my name's Irrelevant, and today on the show, a Vox AC30 412 stack with multiple issues. A musician friend of mine contacted me asking me if I could work on this amp. Uh, the first report is strange noises that it's making. Scratching, cackling, cruddy noises. And the thing is, I've heard that sound before, but I forget what causes it. It's come up a few times in my years working on amps, but that's one of the issues. Among some of the other issues, the reverb is disconnected and the wires are just hanging out. He says the reverb was acting up, but he doesn't quite remember what it was doing. It's been disconnected forever. And then among <laughs> one of the biggest issues is everything on this amp is loose. Everything, 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 everything. Actually wiggling that made some of the sound go away. Oh, it's just because it's the master volume and I turned it down while I was wiggling it. Now this is an amp that's been ridden hard and put away wet. The uh, band that this amp worked for, they gigged regularly up until COVID hit. So <laughs> this thing's been around a while. Now, as far as I know, this is an early mid 2000s variation. It was uh, you know, a reissue of sorts. I wasn't even aware that they made these amps in a 412 until I saw this thing hit the stage. But sure enough, they did at some point. And now I gotta figure out what's wrong with this thing head amplifier. So let's uh, let's start taking her apart and see what we got to work with. Another issue that he's reported is the standby pops the fuses if you use it. Mind you, apparently that's a known issue. Might not actually be anything wrong with the amp in that regard, but I might know a trick or two to stop that from happening. Oh, even the screws are loose. Oh, okay. Well, this gets us uh, partially into the circuit board here. A nice little PCB. It looks pretty simple, so it should be relatively easy to work on. But then another sub PCB hiding in there. Looks a little dusty. There we see where the reverb connects. Oh, not really. There's more ports under here. Okay, that's an interesting way of doing things. And there's a secret port down here. Oh, that's connected to the speaker, so you can connect a speaker in here. I guess that's done for combo applications. Now, how do we actually get this chassis out of here? Oh, it's like some sort of amp sandwich. Ah, oh, there's some nice long screws under here. That's usually how it goes, under screws. Whoo, look at these beasts. These screws are loose too. So this should, yep, there it goes. Well, this is certainly an interesting shaped chassis. It's like three dimensional. And we have three different layers of board. You know, we have a preamp board here, I guess a power board there. And we're gonna have a, another board under here for this stuff. Sane, sane core, sane core, sane core. Is, is that a new genre I haven't heard of yet? Sane core? 2007, we have a date, it's 2007. EL34 tubes, or sorry, 84 tubes. Self-tex from 2017, okay. Like I told him, might be due for a tube replacement, but he says he replaced them recently. And just because they say 2017 on them doesn't mean they're old tubes. They could be just tubes that didn't sell. The 5AR4 rectifier has a date of 2018. So what do we have up front here? Self-tech WAs from 2013. Okay, well, part of what I have planned for this guy is to just tear it all down and inspect the boards, and probably I'm going to be redoing all the solder joints. It's very good chance an amp that's been around the way this one has, it's, it's just loose. It's just loose, and a little bit of TLC might bring it right back to life. Just go through, redo all the solder joints. Fortunately, the PCB doesn't look overly complicated. We've got a couple... Uh, chips there, which 
Those are going to be op amp amplifier buffers for the effects and the reverb. So this thing's got solid state effects loop and reverb. There's some other transistors in there. That's got to be some sort of redesign. They didn't have transistors when they first designed this thing. Everything in here seems straightforward though. We go through, retack all those solder joints. Oh, mm, another IC. IC, another transistor. Vox, what are you trying to pull here? Common HT fuse. I don't see a bridge rectifier on this thing. I'm guessing the power circuit's gonna be underneath in there. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Now, one of the first places I'm gonna start with this amp, which is one of the easiest places to start, is with the cabinet itself. Uh, I'm gonna take uh, the back off here for the sake of the audience so you can take a look at what's inside of here. But this panel needs to be reseated anyway. It's, um, even this damn panel is loose. Go figure. These screws holes might be stripped out. Let's see. No, no, there's still some torque. Now, most of these screws were certainly loose. Oh boy. Huh. Uh, huh. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I might have to order parts for this thing because he's missing all the Liddy Pitons. 16 ohms. And I saw his amp was set to 8 ohms. Oh boy. How do you let your thing get this bad, bud? Okay, what do we have in here? Wharfdale? Vox Amplification Custom Loudspeaker Series GSH 123016, 30 watts. So 16, 30 watts, 120 watt cab. It said that on the back panel. Designed and built exclusively by Wharfdale. Wharfdale, I remember that name. They made like some affordable, affordable PA systems at one point. Huh. Well, I wasn't expecting to see that. Seems like some cheap subcontracted component, not necessarily, you know, we're not finding Celestians in here anyway. This wire looks beefy though, that's good. 18 gauge, that's reasonable for the application. All soldered on, so electronically this cab is sound, but um, these are stereo, so we kinda are gonna have to figure out which side goes where. We'll do that when we get it back together. Now let's see if we can get this thing back into place, reseat it, tighten it up, and um, yeah, maybe we don't need to replace the screws on it. Now the panel doesn't want it. It's just not sitting nice. We're gonna have to use a little bit of persuasion. There we go. We'll be able to get it on nice like this. Some nice tension on it. All right, we got some good torque. I almost feel like I could, should consider putting glue into these holes so that these don't come loose again on them. You know what? Yeah, he's not really gonna need to take this apart. And even if he does, well, the glue can be broken. So think of it like Loctite, right? Just a dabble doer. We don't wanna make it so he can never take it apart again, right? Just the slightest whiff, just just the slightest, I don't know if I can show you. And of course, I'm kind of doing an X pattern like you would putting on a car tire or something like that, just for good measure. All right, he's good for that aspect of things anyway. Now we're gonna try to identify, uh, I might have to do one joint here, redo one joint, because this thing's been so loose and twisted up, this wire here is looking rough. In the meantime, I'm gonna try to do the nine volt battery test to figure out uh, which side's which here. Ah, fortunately, the cover Velcro's off. All right, this one I'm on is this side, so channel A, I guess. We'll just put it in the same perspective where the speakers are. Lucky for this guy, I got replacement rings in stock when I uh, damaged my cab. I ordered a couple spare. So here I've got a glue gun glue stick, and all I'm gonna do is heat the bit end with a bit of a torch here and then put on a little dollop. Essentially, we're gonna glue these things on so they can't come loose again. However, glue gun glue, it's easily broken, so it's non-permanent. That's a quick and easy way to use glue gun glue without having to bust out the gun and wait for it to heat up. If you just need a dollop of it, just torch it. Yeah, that'll do. It's kind of a hack job, but I know he'll appreciate it. This plate's been a bit deformed. I should have sorted that out before I um, put this all back together. 
That's okay, I can clamp my vise on sideways here. Now I'll just uh, call in a consultant. Try not to smash too hard on a speaker cab. You don't wanna screw up your magnets. There we go. That sits nice now. We'll just trim off this access just a little bit and uh, yeah, she'll be okay. Now I'll put one of the, the only original screw left back in. Hmm. What size screws do we need here? These are number six. Let's see how these fit. Ah, number six will do nicely. All right, I'll put a fresh set of screws in there once I've uh, fixed that connection and then the cab should be good. Just uh, gotta tackle that chassis next. <laughs> That's gonna be a lot of work. He said he disconnected the reverb unit because it was giving him some form of grief and it's been a while so he can't remember why. So I'm gonna inspect on this unit real quick to see if there's any problems with it. First time I've seen a reverb unit with like a press board underbelly. Oh yeah, that'll do it. One of his reverb springs broke off and that's broke off, oh boy. That's not something I think I can really repair. Like there's this fine little hair of wire in there that it attached to. And the end of the spring itself, like that's, huh. How do we even go about attaching that? Ruby reverberation unit. Everything in this amp is weird. Like I don't think Ruby makes reverb units. Ruby is a relabeling company. That's, um, yeah, I'm not sure what to do with that off the top of my head, other than, you know, basically just clip off the broken spring and allow him to keep using it with just two springs, which should still provide some method of reverberation, although it probably not as thick. We'll get back to that later. See, so yeah, that, that'll do it, that'll do it. Now, fortunately for him, typically reverberation, if it's, you know, turned out of the circuit, it's not gonna cause some of the problems that uh, we're dealing with here. And it looks like we could situate this like this. Uh-huh, reverb and stuff connects there. We're not gonna be reconnecting the reverb. We will set it to eight ohms, output bias. That's new to me. Smoothing, modern vintage. Okay, interesting. There's some features I'm not that familiar with. Now, what we want to do to start things off is some sanity checks. Even though a client says, oh yeah, I changed the tubes recently, that doesn't mean he actually changed the tubes recently. Oh, this jack's loose. You see that wiggling in there? Look at that wiggle. I want to get the amp somewhat warmed up. Hmm. Suddenly it's not making that noise anymore. That shouldn't be humming with nothing connected. Oh, did we fix this amp already? I do have that magic touch. Sometimes I just touch a piece of equipment like this and it starts to magically work again. I've had that happen a couple times, not to toot my own horn. Someone brings in equipment for repair and then I don't actually have to do anything to it. You know, I did reseat the preamp tubes. Still sounds kind of neutered. I don't know if that's just the sound of this amp or what. I'm putting in some bog standard JJ12AX7s. ECC83S, which I know are good tubes, just to compare. I don't have EL84s to substitute those. I can substitute the uh, rectifier tube with a 5U4. They're mostly interchangeable, just the 5U4 is rated for a higher current, so it's it goes in larger amps. Now it's even a bit quieter. Son, it's working perfectly fine. So don't use standby, eh? Hmm. Okay, well, I think his tubes are fine. I think there was some sort of fluke here. Um, 
I pulled out the preamp tubes to look at them. I put them back in and now it's uh, not making noises. Sometimes you just need to reseat stuff. I'm still gonna go through it for an inspection and a bit of a disassembly so that you guys can see what this is all about. But I'm gonna have to take a break here to let all these tubes cool down. Uh, pulling these guys out here is tricky. Let's see if I put some rubberized electrical tape on my pliers. Rubberized, not standard electrical tape. If I can get a grip on these things in a way that won't damage them. No, of course not. Life couldn't possibly be that easy, eh? So how the heck do you get those little guys off? Oh, hey, should probably unplug that, right? You have some sort of special tool for this? It's tricky, but you know, I got the rubber on it. I'm just gripping as hard as I can and kind of working them off. There we go. Why is this spinning and not threading? Oh. It's because the switch barrel is now damaged. And now those things will never come out. That's awesome. Fortunately, I don't think I need to take that board out because all the solder points are accessible from the back. That board's never gonna come out again because everything was so loose. Trying to unbolt this, you know, you see the threaded piece there? That threaded piece is just spinning freely under these guys now. See how those switches are never coming out. You would have to disconnect everything else and desolder them from the board, probably destroy them and replace them with fresh switches. That's okay because the switches are still good, I'm assuming, so we're just gonna go through and tighten everything here up. Things like this happen. There's no real way of predicting that kind of thing. Oh, great, is this metric? My tool's just a touch too imperial. Well, let's see. Huh. 10 millimeter. Go figure. Huh. Huh. So loose. So loose. I almost, uh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna clean all this. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull all these nuts off and I'm gonna retighten them with Loctite. Because clearly everything's gonna come loose on this guy again. Yeah, this entire board wants to come out now, with the exception of the switches. All right, Potter. Let's give it just a little dollop. Put it on this end one. Get it held into place. There we go. Dollop, dollop, dollop. Oh, okay, it's flowing too much. Don't squeeze the tube. Oh, we just wanna sop up a little bit of the excess. Be careful not to get it in the shaft, right? That'd be tragic if you couldn't turn your knobs anymore. Even though this stuff isn't uh, heavy duty enough to seize up the shaft. All right, now that those puppers are in place, let's uh, sop up any excess leakage. All right, so that's tight now. Oh, but still, these guys here, so. So we need to inspect this board, cause like, oh yeah, this is the kind of party we're talking about here. I don't know if you can see it, but that solder joint right there is definitely blown. So that's, that's part of what we're here to do today. All righty then. Oh yeah, we had multiple joints on here. You can tell which one he used most often. That looks good for the most part. We'll just do everything else that's on this board while we're in here. Try to splay your connections. Like don't do too many pins right next to each other too quickly because you might loosen a component. Now, if I didn't explain already, this is a process that I call derossing. It's basically going through an amplifier and redoing all the solder joints. A lot of modern production amplifiers are ROS compliant, R-O-H-S. That means they're lead free, which is great for stuff that you're gonna throw out like a cell phone after a couple years, but for a nice guitar amp that you wanna keep, it's bad. Basically, they're trying to prevent lead from getting out into the environment. Now, where that corner is cut is in the solder. Good solder has lead in it. It's what keeps it nice and pliable and moist over the years so that it stays flexible and stays good. When they pull the lead out of it, the stuff dries up and gets brittle, or it's just brittle in general, and vibrations can cause it to disconnect. So sometimes when you have an old amp that's glitching out, but it's not really an old amp, it's made within the last, you know, decade, chances are you just have to go through and redo all the solder joints. We're gonna do our glue stick trick here once again. Now well, hopefully those aren't gonna come loose on him again. Gotta get the loose globs off. Oh great, I just found out my audio wasn't recording. That's wonderful. 
Now one of the next places I want to go is into the arse end here, which is slightly harder to show you because I can't really put the amp down on this side. I'll take the cover off and we'll work from there. Ha, huh. okay, you gotta keep going. Longest screws in the world right here. All right, we gotta carefully put this down. All right, what do we have here? We've got some fuses hiding in here, right over there. And these can capacitors, 22s, 450 volts, yeah, pretty standard. Everything looks healthy in here, nothing looks blown. Point to point wiring to a point. Ooh, we've got a resistor here that is looking a little brown, sir. You see that? See that? That's suggesting to us we might be running a bit hot on that one particular tube. Oddly enough, why is it all scratched up around here? This is problematic because this is a PCB that you can't really pull without disconnecting all those wires. It does not make this easily surfaceable. However, ah, there, right there, PB slash, you see that? Lead free, mm, yes, yes, yes. Oh, they had to do it this way. Okay, well I need to flip this around so that I can look at it. Now I will try to pull some screws out of here and see how much we can finagle this board out of place. It looks like the easiest road to take is if I disconnect a few key wires here. Let's see what it takes to pull those off. Ugh, not much at all, okay. And fortunately they're in order. I can see at the other side of the board here, they're exactly in the same order here. So I'm not gonna be able to lose track of which one's which. So now with those guys out of the way, I should be able to carefully pivot the board out this way, assuming these wires here can slack a bit. All right, how much twist am I, twist am I do we have here? Okay, we got these wires here hanging up. I don't know if I can get them over the board. Oh, we got these wires here. Okay, this might run into more trouble than it's worth. How do you even get those out of there? Those are speaker wires. So if there's anything that I'm learning about the Vox amp now, it's that it's not easily serviceable. We have this whole tapestry that they've weaved of how this thing goes together. And unless you take it apart in a very meticulous way, you're not gonna be able to get at everything. I don't know that I'm gonna be able to de-ross this power board for him. I'm gonna have to message the guy and find out what his budget is because if I have to spend that many hours completely dismantling this amp, well, that's gonna cost him. Everywhere I look is another wire that's not gonna come out properly. Okay, I better message him.